In today's video, I'll be using my Sile X7 CNC milling machine to convert some square aluminium stock into fully functioning machine billet wheels. Welcome back to the Design, Creativity and Technology channel. My name's Aaron. Recently a customer brought me in a project he wanted machine. Luckily for me he had the CAD model as it saved me loads of time. I brought the model into my CAM software and applied all the necessary tool paths for the first operation. I machine two parts at a time as this helps me to speed up time. I'm using some square 40 by 40 stock for this job. I use my Sharpie and Vernier caliper to obtain accurate measurements between all cuts. Once aligned with the blade, I clamp the stock down firmly in order not to lose any fingers. When cutting aluminium, I like to use this special lubricant which provides clean cuts and helps to keep the blade cool. The drop saw made short work of all the material. In the next to no time I had 8 pieces of stock to use. Now it's off to the CNC machine to make some parts. The first operation in the machine is the facing cycle. This makes the top face perfectly flat and is the datum side for all my other key dimensions. I then use a 2D boring cycle to bore out the centre hole, followed by a 2D contour to match the bearing size. A spring pass was applied to ensure I met the bearing tolerances. The same tool was used on the other side to ensure two identical parts. I then do an outside 2D adaptive. This cleans up all the stock. This is swiftly followed with a 2D contour, which makes a perfectly concentric wheel. To machine the big wide chair from the top of the part, I use a 6mm ball nose end mill and do some ball tracking work to obtain that 3D contour. To give you an idea on how this works, I've sped up the video to 400%. You can see the ball end mill going round and round around the contour to make the big wide chamfer. It's now time to drop in with the 6mm spot drill. This is used to deburr the part and take off that nasty sharp edge to allow the bearing to slip into place freely. The top side operation is now complete and the part is ready to be flipped. To flip the part we need to make some specialised soft jaws. You can see how I made them here out of two pieces of stock aluminium by simply roughing out the stock which will fit the contour of the wheel. Then it's off to the milling machine to make those soft jaws. Here you can see I've used an existing pair of soft jaws and flipped them upside down. That way then I get more parts and I don't have to waste more material. I'll face the first side and then come in to bore out that centre hole. The video here was sped up as I accidentally had the plunge feed rate too slow and was taking too long. You can see the end mill now cutting out the material, making those circular pockets which will hold the wheel in place. Once again I'm doing two parts at a time. Doing two parts at a time helps to speed up your workflow.
Once finished, it was back to the CAD model and the parts were placed inside those modelled soft jaws. Tool parts were applied and once again they were copy and pasted to the other side. In the machine we go. First operation is the facing operation which buzzes off the hat. The hat is that excess material left on top. You can see here I've sped up so you don't have to watch all the boring manoeuvres. We pop back in with the anvil. This now cleans up the pocket for the bearing to go into. You can see once again it will be followed up with a spring pass. This obtains accurate bearing tolerances so the bearings will fit snugly inside the wheels. Last but not least, the spot drill and the spot drill takes off the burr on the opposite side. We now continue to do some ball tracking work again to retain those big chamfers. You may have noticed in my cam model that it was having hints of red, which means tool collision. I wasn't worried about the tool collision here because it was colliding with aluminium soft drills and I knew I couldn't harm the tool. So I ignored it and post-processed it anyway. There we have it hot off the CNC machine, two finished wheels. I repeated this same process to do all eight of them. To put the groove into the wheel, I made a CAD model to hold my Dremel tool. Now I could have done that simply using a grooving tool on the lathe, but I wanted to be creative. I was quite happy with my 3D printed Dremel tool and it worked well. I placed a three millimeter ball nose end mill in there and gently ran the lathe at a slow RPM. It just carefully plunged in until that O-ring groove was attained. Like I said before, this could have been done on the CNC machine with a proper form tool, or in the lathe with a grooving tool with a round nose on it. However, this was more fun doing it this way. And at last I was finished. I had the prototypes done and of course all the production run done. The customer was very happy and so was I. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.